Hello everyone and welcome to Revit Beginners Pack The essentials you need to know to start on a real project Today the first lesson we look at how to start a new project yourself How to open one created by other people How to change and check key fundamental settings so you can start your work the right way And also how to make sure you close the project properly So let's begin with making a new blank file if you are on this recent file screen, you can just go to Models and then New. Otherwise, if you are looking instead at this grey Revit window, you can then go to File instead and do New Project. The two commands, they do the same thing. Next step is to make sure to choose the right template for you. This is where the profession that you work in may come into play because then Let's say I'm an architect, I may want to go for architectural template. Same for structure, mechanical and so on. Choose a template that is correct for your profession. If you are working for a big organization, they may have their own template for Revit for everyone in their company to use. In that case, make sure you use that template instead. For now, let's go for that one there and choose OK. This will go ahead and create a blank new project file for me. And usually it should have all the settings and components you need loaded already. But it's still a good idea to make sure some key settings are there and set to your needs. If I go to manage, I can see the two key things I always check whenever I begin a new file. The first one is under here, project units. You wouldn't want to draw in the wrong unit, would you? So here, if you are working in the Imperial Measurement System, ensure that these are changed accordingly. Because I'm in the metric system, I can proceed. Because now I know my length measurement is in millimeters, just as I need it to be. If I, for example, work on master planning, I might want to change that to meters to avoid putting in a bunch of zeros every time I want to specify a dimension. But anyway, for now, these are fine. I will accept this and we can move on. The second setting to check here is your snap settings and it's there under snaps. It's a much bigger window than the one before so let me just now take a quick screenshot just so we can avoid going back to it too much. Here we go. The first thing to notice is it lets you turn off snapping globally in the entire model. That's a good idea to have as an option, but I usually never have to do this anyway. Because to be fair, Revit is quite good at working out which snap modes you need in a particular command. And even if you don't want to have snapping on, on the fly, you can just disable it. And I'll show you that a bit later on. For now, just keep this unticked. You want to have snapping on by default. Next thing to see is your length dimension snap increments. And after that, your angular dimension snap increments. The first thing is to do with um, linear distances when you draw in a model. And I'll show you what that means. At the moment, as you can see, it's set to 1,100, 20, and then 5. If I want to, say, draw an annotation detail line, Revit will try to snap to those increments for me as I draw. If I draw my line in this direction, for example, you can see it's snapping to the 100 increment for me. If I zoom out a little, the snap increment changes to 1000. If I zoom the other way and try to zoom in, the snapping is now 20 millimeters. And if I go a bit more in like this, it should snap to a 5 millimeter increment for me. And it does. So, that's what it does. To be honest, I never found the need to change those values anyway. Because I can just keep zooming in and zooming out if I want to change my snap increments. The similar concept applies to angular dimension snap increments. So, if you are zooming out, when you draw a line at an angle, it may snap to 45 degrees, 15 degrees, and so on. And if you zoom in, it may snap to 1 degree increments. So that's that. Next step is for us to check our object snaps. And here, this is where people find it hard to say, just keep everything turned on, especially if you have been working in AutoCAD for a long time. 
but for me, it's always a good idea to keep all of them on anyway, because Revit is quite good at figuring out which snaps you need anyway on the fly. So let me demonstrate that if I go now and make just a simple rectangle. And let's say I want to draw a line now, starting from the midpoint of this upper line. I can just go there and if I get close enough, I'm snapping to the midpoint anyway. But if I want to use and select a particular snapping mode, I can now right click on the blank space there and choose snap overrides and pick the midpoints in this case. Now, whenever I touch this line, even from far away from the midpoint, my snapping always takes me there. When I click here now, I'm snapping still to that simple midpoint. The same goes for other snapping modes. If I go now to draw a new line, but this time I want to draw only from intersection points, I can now right click to snap overrides, intersections. And now, wherever I go, I can only get to intersection points, not endpoints, not midpoints. Click again to select. And here we have it. So the key takeaway here is keep all of them turned on and override individual snapping modes whenever you need to on the fly. The final section of this window only shows you a few more hotkeys you can use to fine tune your snapping when you draw things. I usually just use this simple single tap key anyway. And this is how you can do it as well. Let's say I want to draw now a line from the midpoint again of this line, of this, of this upper line. But when I go to here now, it's trying to snap me to the end point of the other line that I drew before. I can now use a tab key to snap to this other midpoint. You see it? That's a midpoint because it has a triangular highlight instead of the rectangular one. So again, end point, not the one I needed, so tap and get the midpoint. All right, so that's how we deal with this snap settings window. Not much to change here, but it's still important for you to go in here and check that everything is on and that you are happy with the default settings. Next step is for us to look at saving this project. It's good and nice to have it open like this, but for sure, saving work is important as well. If you are in this project and it's open already, just go to File, Save. And now you can give it a good name for a project, you can use any name now and choose save. If you instead is working in an environment where you have to make the model work shared so that everyone else in the team can work on it at the same time, you need to go to the collaborate tab, click on work sets and enable the first two work sets. Doing this, we also make sure the file is turned into a central model. Now these are the two work set we saw before, we can now do OK to confirm. And now if I go to save, this file will be converted into a central model. In other words, a work shared file. Let's go ahead and do yes to confirm this. And now project 4 is a central model. I can now close it. And then reopen it from my recent file screen. If you don't have this recent file screen available at the moment, you can do the same thing by going to File, choose Open, and then select the central file you want to open. In our case, that's project number four. And because it's a central file, make sure you have this create a new local file tick box selected before you do open. Doing this means you're not opening the central model directly, but just making a new local file where you can work on it and then synchronize your changes back to this central model. All right, it's open now. And if you pay attention closely, the file name is now project4 underscore test. Where did that test text come from? I'll show you now under file options. By the way, you also have to go here sometimes when you draw and start a new project model just to make sure some settings you need are in place. So now I can go to File, Options. 
And here you can see that test text is my username. By default, Revit creates a local file by getting the central model file name and then append that with the username. If you want to change that, here is a place to do it. Now, there are millions of other settings in this option window, and I'll show you some of them more in following videos. But when you just start it out, these are the key things you need to check. Well, firstly, make sure you have a meaningful value under safe reminder intervals and synchronize with central reminder interval. What it's saying here is that every half an hour, if you, if you have been working but haven't saved your file, Revit will prompt you to do so. Same for synchronizing with central. If you are in the file for more than half an hour without syncing, it's going to ask you if you want to sync, and the answer is usually yes. Next thing to look at is your file locations. Now we saw these template files before when we created a new project, remember? If you want to add your own template, you can do so from here by adding a value. Let me just quickly copy this file location there with Ctrl C and press the plus sign there, Ctrl V to paste it there and enter to go there. For example, if I want to add this default metric template to my list for use later on, I can now choose open and now it's added. The next time I go to file, new project, default metric is there for me as an option. How about going back to it? That's easy as well. If I go to here, click the minus sign to remove. Next thing to check is if you are happy with this location for default user files. At the moment, it's setting to my C drive and then the folder called Revit. That's the folder Revit will go to by default when you do a save. So if I do now save as project, it will go straight to C Revit for me. Going back to options now. The next thing to check and ensure to have a meaningful value is the default path for family template files. This is the path wherever it will open whenever you go to File, New, Family. It should be available for you all of those family templates. If it's not there, if this location here is invalid, you can watch my video here on the screen at the moment and see how we can fix that. Okay, so in this video, you learned how to start a new project from scratch, how to open one created by someone else and begin working, how to check for certain key settings and make sure they are up to your needs, and how to configure some global settings under Revit options. We'll see more about those and other key things you need to know to start on the real Revit project in our following videos.